Hello, welcome to Number 7 Ministries Christian Outreach. Today's short sermonette is called, But He is Just a Man. Tomorrow, most Americans are going to be celebrating Independence Day, or the 4th of July, which is a day that is honored that the Declaration of Independence was signed and brought to pass that America could be free or liberated from the rule of Great Britain. And although that is a wonderful thing in the natural, and it's a wonderful thing politically speaking, I want to say that the body of Christ is doing the exact same thing. The body of Christ is declaring to be independent. There is a common trend, there's a common attitude, and there's a common perception that Christians can be independent from the body of Christ, that denominations can be independent from the rest of the body of Christ. And you can do that, but that will be to your demise. And I know this not because I was taught, I know this from personal experience. And I do know that the Bible says you have no need of a man to teach you anything, but the Holy Spirit will teach you all things. And that is true, but oftentimes that Bible verse is confused, abused, and misused. And the reason why I say that is because we need other people to be used in their gift through the Holy Spirit so that we can receive from them. And this is the thing, if we don't have the Holy Spirit, we won't be able to receive nothing from anybody because we need the Holy Spirit to teach us all things. So someone could pour their heart out to a person and they can quote from Genesis to Revelation a million times and that person who's receiving won't receive nothing because they don't have the Holy Spirit to teach them on top of what that person is saying. This is why a lot of people misunderstood Jesus and they abused Jesus because they didn't know what he was saying because they didn't have the Holy Spirit because their mind wasn't right, because their heart wasn't right. And when our mind gets right and our heart gets right with God, we'll have understanding of the things that God wants us to understand. This is the thing. If you're a Christian and you're celebrating Independence Day in your spiritual life, that is like a person who is right-handed who neglects his left hand. A person who has two legs but only uses one leg. A person who only uses one lung. A person who covers up one eye and only uses the other. If you are operating independent spiritually, then you are cheating yourself from being able to be used fully. You're cheating yourself from being able to be used as the body of Christ, as one unit, as one person to the fullest potential that God has in store for you. If you judge another person, that same judgment that you judge towards that other person is the same thing that cheats you from being able to receive God the gift that God put in that person to benefit yourself. The Bible verse that I would like to read is 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 8. When Elijah, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his robes, he sent him this message, Why have you torn your robes? Have the man come to me, and he will know that there is a prophet in Israel. A cap of what's going on is that the king of Israel ripped his robes because he was grieved because another king had sent a message to him to have his servant, who was a ruler over the army, Naaman, to be healed of leprosy. And the king of Israel said, I'm just a man. Why would you do this? You must be up to something. See, that king of Israel at the moment was cheating himself from receiving from God because he was suspicious of that other man. But that other man had no foul intentions. That other king only wanted his servant to be healed of leprosy because the king loved Naaman. Because Naaman was doing great things through God. 
And so this is the thing, as the body of Christ, do we cheat ourselves from receiving from other Christians because we're suspicious of them, because we think they're up to something? But see, in this case, with Elijah and the king uh, of uh, Syria and Naaman, it wasn't the case. It was just a case of a person who had leprosy and needed and wanted desperately to be healed. If you had leprosy, wouldn't you desperately want to be healed too? Of course you would. So this is the thing. Elijah said, don't rip your robe. Don't worry about anything. I'm going to let this man know that there is a prophet in Israel. And you as the Christian, you should have that same confidence that God can use you in the same exact way, especially if you have the Holy Spirit, because God is no respecter of persons. The next Bible verse I want to read is 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 11. It says, But Naaman went away angry and said, I thought he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of Lord his God and wave his hand over the spot and cure me of my leprosy. Look at this. Naaman went away angry. See, because Elijah told Naaman to go, actually Elijah told his servant to tell Naaman to go dip in the Jordan River seven times. And Naaman was not pleased with the way that he was going to get his deliverance. He thought that he would have to go meet Elijah, but Elijah didn't even meet him. He told his servant to go tell him to dip in the Jordan River seven times. This is what I want to emphasize, is that Naaman went away angry because he was not happy with the way that the man of God dealt with him. And I want to say that sometimes Christians get cheated out of their miracle because of the way that God uses other Christians. And see, a Christian can tell another Christian to do something that is completely ridiculous, completely illogical, and if that Christian does not humble himself, See, Christians have such high expectations towards other Christians, and in those high expectations and in those preconceived ideas of the way things are supposed to go according to them, not according to God, they cheat themselves out of the miracle that God has for them in their life. And this was the case with Naaman. He went away angry, but Naaman's son said, why are you angry? If he would have told you to do some great thing to be healed of your leprosy, would you have not have done it? Go dip in the Jordan River seven times and be clean. Who cares about what he tells you to do? Who cares about how he gets you saved? Who cares about how he delivers you from drugs? Just do what the man of God told you to do, and you'll get your delivery. So Naaman in time did obey Elijah and he did dip in the Jordan River seven times and he did get healed of his leprosy the next Bible verse that I would like to read is Acts chapter 8 verse 30 and Acts chapter 8 verse 31 and Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said understandest thou what thou readest and he said how can I except some men should guide me and he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. So Philip was asking a man who was reading the word of God, do you understand what you're reading? And the man of God humbled himself and said, no. How many of us Christians will admit that we don't understand the word of God? And how many of us will humble ourselves to go to another person and ask them for help? Or if another person comes to us and says, do you need help? How many of us will humble ourselves to be able to receive that help? And see, the key to this whole message is that some people cheat themselves out of receiving what they could have in God because they have pride, because they have insecurities, or because they don't think that things are going the way that they feel that they should go, so they're completely deprived out of what God has for them. I want to close with this, is that there are two fatal problems that Christians have, 
And one of them is that they put too much emphasis on a man that they actually worship the man and they idolize the man. It could be your pastor. It could be an elder, a prophet, a teacher. It could be uh, one of the TV ministers. It could be anyone. Christians sometimes put too much emphasis on a man. The other fatal error that Christians have is they put too little emphasis on man. They devalue man and look so far down on man that they cheat themselves from being able to receive anything that God gifted them. That's why Jesus said, who do you say that I am? Because according to your faith, be it done unto you. If you believe someone is nobody, he's a no good rotten scoundrel, you're not going to be able to receive the gift that God installed in him. But if you believe that he is a man of God and you humble yourself, you'll be able to receive great things. So listen to this most importantly. As a Christian, don't put too much emphasis on a man, but don't put too little emphasis on a man that you deprive yourself from what God has for you. God bless you. Have a wonderful 4th of July and thank you very much for watching these sermons. I pray that it blesses you, edifies you, and I pray that you grow as a Christian.